Hey, Scipio here. I want to spend just a second to talk about the main gear to pinion mesh. Um, I'm not sure I spent enough time on it last time uh, when I did the build video. And so I'm more than willing to, uh, to revisit it uh, for my own benefit as well as for yours. And it's an important thing to mention that I, I didn't really talk about before, and that is the main gear is quite likely and in many cases, probably not gonna be exactly round. Which means, if you set the, the, uh, the relationship between the main gear and the pinion on one side of the main gear, it quite possibly could fit entirely differently on the other side of the main gear. So I didn't really go through that part of the process uh, with you all on making sure that uh, we check the entire gear uh, for that uh, that relationship. The reason why it's so important that you don't get it too tight is because if there's pressure put on the top of the pinion or on the pinion itself which is the top of the motor it's gonna wear out those bearings in the motor so you're gonna have motor failure a lot sooner because of that extra pressure it's it's just like it's it's something just rubbing uh, a little bit sideways on it the inverse, if it's too loose, you're going to probably strip your main gears much faster because uh, there's opportunity for those gears to slip. So there's kind of this balancing point that has to happen between the main gear and the pinion to get it aligned just right. Alright, so I think I have this set where I want it. And basically, what I have is a black Sharpie mark uh, on one of the arms of this main gear. And I'm using that as a point of reference for um, making sure I get all the way around to check. It also helps me uh, serve as a guide for where my high spots are uh, on the main gear. And in this case, I think this second arm, the one right after, uh, somewhere in this side, seems to be a little bit of, uh, of a higher spot. But as you can see, I've got adequate play and I'm just checking all of these arms that come off uh, of this main gear until I get back to that sharpie mark. I'm just using these as little checkpoints. So a little bit of play. Uh, it's not too tight that it's pushing on the pinion but it's not too loose that it's going to strip itself out. And while the paper method is a good place to start, you really do need to go through and check uh, all sides of this thing and make sure. Um, and I think it's kind of one of those, like I said, it's kind of an art. It's Once you know you've got it, you've got it. Um, there's no surefire uh, solution, otherwise that would be a tool out. Uh, that just sets it for you. So um, you just kind of got to look at it, pay attention to your your uh, main gear, and uh, and its particular nuances with uh, with being out of round. But I think that's going to be the right setting. So uh, hopefully this is helpful for you, uh, and uh, and hopefully this looks right to you. You you pros out there that are watching my videos, and I do appreciate all of you. Um, the feedback I'm getting is fantastic. Uh, particularly being a a new heli builder without anybody to build with, right? So uh, even when I go down to the local uh, hobby shop, there's like one guy that knows anything about helicopters, and he's never there when I'm there. So when I look for parts, they're all like, oh, yeah, that guy's not here. So uh, I'm pretty much on my own. Part of it's by choice. Um, I, I enjoy the challenge. Uh, but, uh, but I do appreciate all the feedback that I'm getting. And, uh, you know... I think it's awesome uh, how, how helpful this community is. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to revisit that because I don't think I gave it enough time uh, when I originally built. I was kind of excited to get moving through the whole process, and I want to stop and revisit this piece again. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.